Hello friends, good morning. So we are getting into the session, 8th session of the video lecture series on learning disability. And today we are going to learn some of the activities of how to improve the finger motor coordination. Okay, so I was telling that, uh, that, that some of the children might have problem in using the fine motor and gross motor abilities. That is uh, using their hands and the legs. So maybe because of it is because of that that they have problem in holding a pencil or a pen and writing or taking a bag and so this would be the problem for their learning disability one of the problem. So we need to help the children to to improve on their fine motor and gross motor skills. So some of the activities I'll just list you down. Uh, last video I was telling about attention enhancing activities. So whatever I'm telling these are some of the points some of the ideas that. I have and uh, what has been uh, regularly practiced and simple intervention techniques. So what I'm telling is that you can have better ones. You can have your own creative ways of, uh, you know, doing it. So these are not uh, rigid methods that these are the only methods available. So you can have your own creative ways, which is more suitable for your children and for your family. You can very well use that. So uh, this is just an idea, throwing, giving you an idea of what to be done, right? Okay. Now, again, I'll uh, give you 10 uh, small, simple intervention strategies for improving finger motor coordination. The first one is very simple. Catch and throw. There we have a game, no? Catch and throw. So, let's have some balls of various sizes. Small ones, little bigger one and the bigger one. So, these are some of the things that we have to buy and keep it as an investment. Uh, balls of different sizes. And then we'll have to throw. And then we'll have to see how much they are able to, you know, judge the space and how much they are able to hold it and how much grip they have in holding that if it is a smaller one or a bigger one so these are the things so many times they will put it down but we can give them practice and again and again and teach them like okay now you can do it if you do it you will be so with the motivation and encouragement they will be able to develop the skill so catch and throw is very simple one which we all do it but we have to do it regularly see we have to remember that the activities that we are telling is like prescription it's like, you know, um, a, a tablet that is prescribed by the doctors. So the doctors will say every day morning one, every day night one. So like that. These are some of the things that we have to do it minimum every day. Okay. At least once or whenever we have, we have time. So, I mean, so when we are doing all these things, then definitely we can see that uh, there will be an improvement over a period of time which will help them. So, uh, on a sudden, we cannot expect, you know, what to do. These are the things that we'll have to practice. So, catch and throw, very simple one, which we can practice. The second one is lemon and spoon, okay? Just give them, these are uh, sports activities, which we see only in schools. We can do it at home. But in school, school, we'll have around six to eight children participating. Maybe at home, we will not have. We'll have only two children of different age group. So, maybe we will not be able to do, but still, one person alone, we can note down the time taken. You can now you can say, see, for you to walk from there to here, it took uh, two minutes. Okay, but uh, next day maybe you just took one minute and you were able to do it. So hats off to you. You are improving. So like that, the time noted can be kept, or how much without falling, how they are bringing. So it is a spoon and a lemon, and they have to. This also increases the attention. So they will be able to hold on to the muscles. And how they are able to control and bring it over there. So finger motor as well as attention develops with this. And the third one is bowling game. We all see, you know, in big malls and all we find there will be uh, boxes which are kept and they will have to bowl it, right? And we can just keep small, small uh, boxes at home, one above the other, maybe six or seven boxes. And then we can ask them to actually bowl from here so that the intention is they'll have to, uh, you know, all the, they'll have to strike out. They have to, uh, you know, uh, the ball has to go and hit all the boxes and everything has to come down. Right. Now, this is the intention. This is very interesting for the kids because it's like, uh, you know, uh, the, the ball will go and hit, you know, that hitting makes, makes it all the more interesting. So we can actually, uh, you know, ask them to do it. Now, this helps in attention at the same time they are able to hold the ball and uh, throw it properly with the proper speed and uh, distance so that it uh, hits at the correct place so bowling game is a good game and the fourth one is dry pouring dry pouring means 
uh, we have um, tur dal, we have urad dal, or we have small beans, um, sorry, beads, um, or small, small things that we have, no, uh, which we can actually put it in a small glass and uh, give another glass and ask them to pour it, which is called a dry pouring. So without spilling, they must be able to pour it properly. They cannot just dump it. So, which means, so that small holding of that glass and uh, holding this and then pouring itself is a finger motor coordination activity. So, it is called dry pouring. This is a Montessori activity which is done in schools, which we can do it very well at home. So, why are these things are becoming a Montessori activity? Because it has got so much of uh, a meaning and relevance for the brain development. That is why, no? So, we can do it very well with the things that are available at home. So, that is dry pouring. We need to begin with that. So, once they are good in that, then we can have wet pouring. Wet pouring is having water, okay, and they'll have to pour it. Now, this is all more, all the more chances they'll, they'll spill it. So, we have to see to it where they are sitting and even if they spill, it is not a problem. So, accordingly, we need to give a glass of water and an empty glass and ask them to pour the contents of the glass into the other glass. This can be a regular activity and we, and we can see how they are doing it well, right. And then we have the sixth activity as clay play, um, in where we have, you know, those days and all people used to, children used to go out and, you know, work in the mud and, you know, they used to make small, small uh, toys and, uh, you know, shapes out of the clay. But nowadays we are not allowing them to, you know, go and use the clay. Uh, but there are items that are readily available, which is, you know, plasticine, that clay uh, toys and everything. So it will be given to them and they can make different shapes out of it. So we can say, ask them to make small, small balls out of it or small uh, shapes like, you know, beans or things like that. So we can actually, all this helps them to use their hands uh, very well, which helps in finger motor coordination. Then another seventh activity is uh, scissor work. Uh, scissor work is again uh, asking them to, you know, we can draw something uh, and uh, ask them to cut it at properly. So, I mean, that needs a lot of attention at the same time, hand movement. So, if their hand is not, uh, I mean, able to hold on to that, they will not be able to cut properly. So, we can actually give them training and uh, make them cut bigger pictures and then cut smaller pictures. So, like that, we can improve the uh, finger motor coordination. And uh, hopping games, okay. Hopping games are really uh, good. This is, uh, uh, this, uh, you, you need to hold that uh, skipping. Uh, hopping games and uh, you know which which actually helps them to uh, use their whole body as such so all this while what we were seeing is uh, using that uh, fine motor for the gross motor we have to allow them to make use of their whole body hold the rope and then uh, turn it around and jump also so it is like involvement of every uh, muscles and uh, and coordination that takes place so by the time this rope comes down i need to jump otherwise i'll fall down so hopping game is such a fabulous uh, uh, you know brain development and uh, finger motor coordination activity then uh, swimming dancing all these are um, activities only so we don't have much uh, time and space for swimming nowadays but dancing at home can be done very well Again, I had told all these things as part of attention or enhancing activities. So this is also, it goes along with that too. So dancing wherein, you know, in dance and all, we'll say that, I um, mean, classical dance and all, uh, they'll say the right leg has to tap at the, at, the, at the same time, the left hand has to go like this. So this is so much of uh, coordination that they have to work in the brain. So the right leg and the left hand and the left leg and the right hand. Okay, or right leg and the right hand. So we can give different methods and uh, teach them and train them uh, so that that will help them to learn. The brain will slowly learn uh, for using the whole body, gross motor abilities. And buttoning the shirts, but this is also a Montessori activity. Um, the buttoning, putting the lace of the shoes uh, can be done. So which is something that they love to tie a knot uh, and the shirt buttoning. Many a times we do it for them, but then we'll have to ask them because it needs uh, you, they'll have to make use of that fine motor and then try to put that button inside that small hole. So they'll, they'll have to learn it, learn it, learn it. The more they do it, they'll be able to develop on it. Uh, also, all these things, so 10 activities, simple ones I have told you, which can be done to improve the finger motor coordination of the children. On the whole, what I would like to say is that all these activities improves the uh, coordination. Not only that, it really helps the best time pass for the kids. See, um, I mean, they really look at it as game only. 
So they will enjoy doing this rather than just sitting and watching TV all the time, all the nonsense that is there in the TV, which doesn't help them in any way and makes them like, you know, uh, goose potatoes, like we should not uh, allow them to happen. So this will, they will lose interest in watching TV because this will become more interesting. But the point is that parents have to spend time to be with them, to do all those things and to encourage them. So we will have to allot time for that and then they will start doing it by themselves. Third thing is that since the parents and teachers have to be with them, it really builds a good relationship between them. Nowadays, we don't find that once they come from the school, they are with TV or they are with tuition and the relationship building never takes place. But the parents always complain that, you know, children don't listen to me or all those things. These are some of the nice times that we can really spend with them so that it builds relationship. At the same time, it becomes a real a good activity for them, not just a game, an activity. And this can be given between homework, the studies, because it's a good break. This is actually a nice uh, break. Now, because continuously if they are sitting for half an hour or 40 minutes for writing, they it will become boring for them and they'll get frustrated. Then you can say, now just finish this small handwriting exercise after which we'll play this game. So it's just a game at the same time. It also helps them. So it's a, it's a nice thing for a break. And we should not allow the kids to watch TV for the break. Okay, so no, these things can be done. And uh, so that's what ultimately it's, it's just a game for the kid. But then it's, it's, it means a lot for us. We are actually focusing on improving the child's attention and finger motor and brain development on the whole. So let's take all these things seriously and then try to do it uh, persistently. Every day, minimum every day, some activity has to be done. So that then we, have, we can see a smooth sailing of uh, children with learning disability. Okay, thank you. Bye.